According to this report today, President Trump now has all the evidence he needs to fire Rosenstein. Greg Jarrett and Sarah Carter outline undeniable reasons why Rod Rosenstein should be fired immediately. As we speak, Andrew McCabe is throwing Rosenstein under the bus and claiming he was trying to get rid of the president by secretly recording him and then using that to convince others, including Attorney General Jeff Sessions, to remove the president using the 25th Amendment. According to a tweet today from Sarah Carter, the evidence in these memos from fired FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe and the acting Attorney General Rod Rosenstein is enough for President Trump to fire him and launch an investigation. Who was Rosenstein speaking to and what were they saying? Once again, it goes beyond resistant. Greg Jarrett also tweeted, driven by vengeance, Rosenstein sought to secretly record the president. He must be fired immediately, since a clearly biased Rosenstein has been in charge of the Mueller investigation. It must be terminated. This illegitimate probe has been tainted by corruption from the beginning. As we have said here at Screen Hoopla before about President Trump and his tactics and strategies, he's a smart man. He is taking things like a chess match. He will probably do what needs to be done when it needs to be done. Thank God for President Trump. Constitutional law attorney and now a Fox News contributor. Welcome to both of you. Um, good to have you here tonight. I, I mean, welcome. you know, this, this story, as soon as it came out, um, there was a lot of buzz about what actually happened in the room. And, and the pushback from Rosenstein's side was that he was newly hired. He had you know, sort of just gotten to know the people in this room. There was an aggressive stance from Andrew McCabe about pushing back against the president and that Rosenstein basically was annoyed by the way that, that McCabe was behaving in the room and said, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? You want me to wear a wire? Is that what you want me to do? Something along those lines. Um, Jonathan, when, when you listen to that and you, you think about the tension of that moment that James Comey had just been fired not only days before, um, you know, take a look at the, the activity in that room and, and what does it say to you? Well, what it says is it's a matter of interpretation, and that interpretation could have considerable consequences. I have a column in the Hill today talking about how Trump could use this as a way to fulfill what he has wanted a long t for a long time, mm -hmm. not only to replace Rosenstein, but ultimately Sessions. He could say that this is a case of insubordination, not obstruction, and go ahead and fire Rosenstein uh, and replace him potentially with a person he wants to become ultimately attorney general. If he followed that course, he would end up with an attorney general who had direct control over Mueller's investigation. Now, that's a series of events that is going to be viewed very differently by both of these parties. But it's ironic that this newspaper that the president loves to call the failing New York Times mm. may have given him the yeah, ability to boy, do just that's that. That's rich, isn't it? Um, let, let's talk about the New York Times and the way this story was presented, Howard, because there's also um, reports of, from people who were familiar with what was going on in that room that the the notes and the memos are all typed up they're not extemporaneous notes that were scribbled down they're notes that were probably made later and that for one thing lisa page wrote very copious notes and that andrew mccabe's notes were a little bit scratchier she wrote all these notes and yet she didn't mention any reference to the 25th amendment that was said in the room she right. said the only thing you know the takeaway is that the only thing that was discussed in the room was that wire moment um, and there's some suggestion about why the new york times wrote both of those things together and whether or not they can really back that up. Well, unnamed sources often have agendas, and the unnamed sources behind this explosive time story uh, may be putting the wrong twist on it, possibly or even probably in an effort to damage Rod Rosenstein, because if the line was sarcastic, as sources have told Fox, Washington Post also has a similar account, then it may just be, you know, they're having a heated exchange, Rosenstein and the former number two of the FBI, Andrew McCabe, and, and, and Rosenstein is pushing back. But I do have to say that Rod Rosenstein's denial here leaves a whole lot of wiggle room. He says the article is inaccurate, but he doesn't deny a specific detail in it. He says he doesn't now believe 
president should be removed under the 25th Amendment, but doesn't say anything about whether he uh, at least speculated about that or talked to others about that back in 2017. Yeah. And with regard to that anonymous New York Times editorial that everyone has been trying to figure out who it came from, it also referenced this idea of using the 25th Amendment. Um, and, and Donald Trump Jr. piped in pretty quickly with a tweet saying, we likely have a winner in the search for anonymous, anything to subvert a president who's actually getting things done for America for a change. And now let's put up the actual piece of the anonymous op-ed back then, which said, given the instability many witness, there were early whispers within the cabinet for, of invoking the 25th Amendment, which would start a complex process of removing the president. Your thoughts on all that, Jonathan Turley? Well, first of all, there's no basis that I can see for starting a 25th Amendment uh, process of removal, let alone to have it be successful. It's just, uh, it, is, it, is, it is beyond really any, any sense of plausibility. Uh, but in terms of picking out who's the anonymous source here, I agree with Howard. There's a lot of very weird uh, fingerprints that are likely on this story. Someone leaked these memos, which may be classified. Uh, that could cause a serious issue with the special counsel or the Department of Justice. I don't know what their status may be. But there was clearly an agenda here. Uh, one, one possibility is someone wanted to trigger Trump mm -hmm. uh, to see if he, this would push him to firing uh, Rosenstein. I don't believe he should fire Fire Rosenstein. I don't believe he should fire Sessions uh, because I think that that would complicate this and it would be bad for the country. But um, this really does open up a pathway for him to say that this is really a case of insubordination. Uh, this fulfills the narrative I've been talking about that there are people that are really not supporting me and are seeking to undermine me and he could clean house. And that, Martha. of course, would change a lot yeah. of things. Howie. Look, I mean, President Trump detests Rod Rosenstein because he's the guy who appointed Bob Mueller. He's the guy who oversees the investigation the president considers an illegal witch hunt. But even if the, we get past the irony of him using the newspaper he distrusts to do that, I mean, it would set off an absolute political firestorm. So clearly, I think at least some of these sources would like to prod the president in that direction. But this would not be without a heavy political cost were he to get rid of the, the man, his own appointee, by the way, who is overseeing the Mueller yeah, probe. Fascinating. I mean, Shakespearean in its complexity, really. I mean, all the different people who could possibly want to have put uh, this story out there. We have great people in the Department of Justice. We have great people. These are people, I really believe, you take a poll, I got to be at 95 percent. But... You had some real bad ones. You've seen what's happened at the FBI. They're all gone. But there's a lingering stench, and we're going to get rid of that, too. Hillary's staff gets immunity deals that smell to high heavens. Hillary's operatives use hammers and bleach bit to destroy sought-after cell phones and emails, again, with no consequences, and on and on. But the other presidential candidate, the one who actually won, but wasn't supposed to, well, he's treated very differently. A team of supposedly unbiased investigators turns out to be anything but. Nine out of the 16 have made political contributions, almost all to Democrats, including Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. None gave to Trump. And two of them, as we've heard over and over again today, were communicating back and forth about how they were going to stop candidate Trump from being elected, and even had a so-called insurance policy, a pretty sinister sounding thing, to make damn sure he wasn't elected. So my question to you, Mr. Rosenstein, is this. Do you see why that lady last night might believe there's bias in the Justice Department and how these investigations, when you compare one to the other, have been carried out? Yes, sir, and I, I share your concern. As you know, I wasn't the one running the investigation in 2017. I absolutely share your concern. I understand that. Uh, and I think one of the challenges that we face, and Director Ray and I are very familiar with this challenge, is that the, the culture of the Justice Department in which we operate, and there are exceptions, obviously, but the culture in which we operate is one in which uh, we make a conscious effort not to consider partisan issues. In fact, the way I've run my offices, I've been a manager in the Justice Department uh, in a number of different capacities uh, at this point for uh, uh, about uh, 16 years or so. Uh, and uh, my, I've been very uh, uh, 
attuned to this issue. Let me and, stop and there. I make every effort, yeah. Congressman. I'm, I'm running out of time. My time's very short at this point. I, I appreciate that you weren't there. You are now, so we appreciate your cooperation, appreciate your hard work. So let me just conclude with this. The American people, like that lady last night who asked that question on my telephone town hall meeting, um, and of course she felt that there was bias by the DOJ investigation, uh, clearly by the way she asked it. I think the American people deserve a whole lot better than what they've been getting from their Justice Department of late. They have a right to unbiased, fair investigations. They have a right to expect equal treatment and equal justice, whether a person uh, that they're investigating is a Democrat or a Republican, whether they're conservative or liberal, whether they were expected to win an election or not, whether their name happened to be Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. And I'm afraid that's not what happened here. And I yield back. Congressman, I, as I was saying, I do share your concern. <clears throat> One of the challenges that we face, sir, is that uh, we operate in an environment where in our interactions in the office, we make every effort to avoid any references to politics and where we focus on the facts and the law and we consider all the evidence before we reach conclusions. Uh, American people are getting their information uh, from other sources and they don't always hear both sides. Uh, and I think it's important, sir, this gives me and Director Ray an opportunity to explain the way that we're running our organizations. There are going to be mistakes, uh, but I think the assurance of the American people comes in our commitment to follow the rules. There were violations of the rules. I recognize that. We're making every effort to make sure that doesn't happen on our watch. With 115,000 employees, uh, we're going to have issues as well, but I can assure you that we're going to deal with them appropriately. Uh, and with regard to my commitment, Congressman, uh, the Attorney General uh, has been very clear about his uh, desire to ensure that the Department follows regular order, that we follow these traditional rules and practices. Uh, and if we adhere to these rules, uh, there will sometimes be skeptical questions because we're not able to respond publicly to criticism. But at the end of the day, Congressman, I can assure you the cases that are brought on our watch uh, are, are going to be in compliance with the rules. Uh, and so I hope uh, that over time, seeing us follow the rules, the American people will regain whatever confidence they've lost. Uh, because as Director Ray said, these folks we work with day in and day out, uh, they are almost all there to do the right thing. And to the extent that they're not, we'll hold them accountable.